Not all AI videos are born equally. Some videos may have been AI processed, but calling them all AI generated just feels a bit off. It's like that feeling when you're calling someone a doctor, but they have a PhD in English. On top of AIs being literally a black box to many other people, it has naturally generated some confusions about what its actual capabilities are and how much AI is used in something that you are seeing. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the types of AI generated videos sorted on a spectrum of how big of a black box they are so next time when you see one, you would know how they are made so you can start mansplaining to your friends and family about how educated you are in the modern AI technology. The first type is the text-based AI generated videos. This is the largest black box of them all and also the most straightforward one. You throw some text in and boom, videos are coming out. This is what I would personally call as a fully AI generated video because the entire generation process feels like one big leap of faith as the most control that you are able to input is text and that is is also across modalities. So this process gives off the most black box vibes. And if we have a spectrum of how generated it is, this would be sitting on the most left of them all. So the more to the right means the less obscure the black box is and the less knowledge an AI has, which made the leftmost being the holy grail of AI generated videos. Like if this method is perfected, you don't need any other tools to the right to increase the quality anymore. A very good example is the world simulator idea proposed in OpenAI's text to video generator Sora, where the AI black box will eventually build a good enough representation of the world by learning from video data or even from other sources that it can basically simulate the world and its physics. But unfortunately, the current pure AI generated videos are far away from that. So some other workarounds would be added, like picking an initial image for an AI to work based on, to provide generation control and to even boost the quality of the generated videos. But after the initial frame, the quality usually decreases heavily and sometimes just turns into some weird blob without work. But this doesn't stop people from making pretty good looking AI generated videos due to the insane amount of control that is getting to pick an initial image. And sometimes adding AI lip syncing over it can also make it look extremely realistic. Some pipelines can get even more complicated like incorporating VFX softwares, but we are not going to get into that. And here's a list of text to video generators you can use if you're interested. Moving slightly right to the spectrum, we have a technique called a video to video. And at this stage, due to how the AI is designed, it is incapable of really learning any 3D concepts like how an object looks differently in another direction. So most of the knowledge is learned on a 2D plane while beating the 3D ideas into the model with brute force. So before text to video took off, video to video generation was the only other way to make a quote unquote fully AI generated video. This method means that you are taking a base video and have an AI model to basically paint over it. This method first emerged from text to image models and you would have the AI model to paint over the individual frame of the video, which is a pretty hacky way to get an AI generated video. Then video to video became more prominent as a temporal component is added to the AI model. So each frame is connected to one another more cleanly with less weird stutter throughout the generated video. And a slight 2.5D trade would appear as having the temporal element helps its understanding and generation consistency over the frames. Like the video you're seeing right now is made with Domo AI with the whole process of video to video being simplified and made for you easily. With Domo AI being today's sponsor, all it really takes for you is to pass through the input video into their in-house AI model, and it will generate the resulting video for you without any hassle. Domo AI currently offers video-to-video -video style transfer functions such as in the style of Japanese anime, paper art style, pixel style, Van Gogh style, and many more. It can kind of act as a filter to drag down the dimension of the base footage from 3D to 2D, which is perfect if you're trying to make the footage more pixelated or in the style of anime. Like you probably have seen those footage of artistically looking blobs moving or dancing very intriguingly. And that is basically the effect of video to video and you can process any footage yourself like that with Domo AI. They have a range of customized models for you to pick from, each with different anime or illustration styles you can use and generate with. They are what I've seen so far with the best results while needing the least amount of effort compared to other services. Other than being able to generate on their Discord, they have also announced their web version recently, which in my opinion is much easier to try out and browse other people's cool looking generations. So if you're interested, check out Domo AI using the link down in the description and thank you Domo AI for sponsoring this video. But other than a proprietary pipeline, the general video to video pipeline is the most chaotic as it was a hacky method developed to replicate the effect of fully generated AI videos. As in its earliest days, it was just text to image model conditioned on individual video frames and tracing over it without any consistency over time. I have some old videos covering how crafty some people made their AI 
AI videos at the time, you can check them out if you want. But this still requires more AI generated effort than the next one down the right, the infamous face swap. Face swap is a more domain specific generative AI, often targeted on the faces, with very strong generalization capabilities that can morph the chosen face onto the targeted face like it belongs there. But I would say it is so much less generative than video to video, as video to video encompasses more generative knowledge other than faces to be able to trace over the footage accurately as compared to face swaps that only need specific domain knowledge, which is only the face. Most of the AI filters are often combined with face swaps, and some people even engineer to be less sensitive when there are obstructions like having hands in the face. The same logic roughly goes for body swaps. There was a very viral meme recently that uses body swap, and through the company Viggle, people have been generating some pretty hilarious footage, which kind of made me think that AI is made for memeing and not for practical use. And now, slightly, slightly to the right of the spectrum, we have this technology that is a bit similar to face swap, and it's a lot more infamous. This word has become the AI scapegoat in the mainstream media, and alternative names like AI avatar or digital avatars have been used to replace it instead. I think this technology pushed us slightly to the right of the spectrum because it only needs to learn to replicate one single person instead of being able to generalize onto any other faces without further training. However, being this specific in a domain like exclusively only having one face do provide an edge like stronger robustness and consistency to replicate someone's look likeness in a setting that requires higher quality. There are many ways to do this, with the most common way being collecting images of a chosen face from various angles, then training the AI model to learn the chosen face to replace a target face seamlessly. However, there are newer techniques where the AI can just learn a face and apply it to any target in real time without much loss in quality, which would be drawing more similarity to a face swap, but still slightly different because face swap is generalizable and doesn't really need a prior training on a specific face. And now, moving to the end of the spectrum, we are left with something called the face manipulation, kind of like puppeting. These have extreme similarities with face swaps, but instead of applying on top of a video, these face manipulation techniques are animating images like a puppet instead, with the addition of being able to synthesize new views of the faces so they can turn in any direction like it's a 3D painting. And to be able to animate them, a driving video is used whereby extracting the facial landmarks, the movements will then be transferred to the target image. And the same thing can be done to the body too. So those dancing memes you see on the internet are probably made by this technology too. To spice things up, some pretty cool experiments like using only audio to animate the images have came out left and right. Which kind of also bring us to AI lip syncing that works in similar fashion, but is mostly targeted in the face or even only the mouth region. However, AI lip sync not only works on images, but also videos. But the bar is a bit low for this one as the mouth is such a small region and is much easier to train and synthesize. This technology is slowly working towards the left of the spectrum as its generation capabilities have increased significantly, but I still placed it here due to the lack of temporal elements as the targeted results are usually images. But overall, all these tools can be blended together to make some funky pipelines, like many of the proprietary services are just a blend of all these methods, whether if it's having a human gesture loop with cloned voice plus lip sync, generative AI avatars with generated facial expressions, or using audio to lip sync a video to make someone else say what they didn't say, but at the end of the day, it became more of an open-ended engineering problem that is trying to create desire for a potential use case into our lives. But I mean, seeing a guy turn into a cute girl is pretty funny, so... Why not? Well, if you enjoyed today's breakdown and would love to stay up to date on the latest AI research papers, I have a newsletter covering the most hot and juicy new research every week, ranging from LLMs to diffusion models. So go check that out if you're interested. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Miguelum, Robert Zaviasa, Owen Ingram, Louis Muck, Tanaro, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.